What's up guys, Brandon with Strict Vision Athletics here with another product review, where we review pieces of equipment based on four criteria, price, usage, footprint, and customer service. Behind me, you guys, is the Transformer Bar 2.0. I have been super stoked about this week's product review for a while now, knowing it was coming. I'm excited to get into this. I'm gonna show you guys what this bar does. Let's get right to it. The Transformer Bar allows for versatility and for a change in the weight in two different ways. So you can make the difficulty level itself change based on the pin placement. So as you can see, you've got four different options on where this pin can go. Down here at the bottom is gonna be your most difficult. The weight is furthest away from your body, therefore the weight is gonna be the most impactful. I can take it up and I can go one, two, three. If I can, yeah, there we are. That would be the easiest, weight being closest. Now, let's talk about the ways in which I can shift the actual load in relation to my gait. So as you can see, you've got six different options here that the transformer bar offers. I keep this at number four, which is SSB, that stands for safety squat bar. And that's a good place to start when you're using this because that is literally centered on my body. That's what a safety squat bar was originally designed to do, which was to allow the weight to be centered with me as opposed to being in front or more traditionally behind me as, as with the traditional uh, straight bar um, barbell back squat. So that's number four. I'm gonna transition and show you guys back here. This is the uh, back squat high and low. All this does is take the weight from that center that I talked about with the SSB and put it behind you. Now, for those of us who like to squat with a high bar, that's gonna be a little bit higher on our back, the weight itself, that's what number three is for. Number two is the low bar. For those of us who like to squat with the bar lower on our back, that's what this is designed to simulate. Down here, back behind that, you'll see number one, which is the hinge. And with this hinge, you guys, if you can tell where this is at now in relation to where it started, that weight is almost all the way behind me. That's for, that's for simulating a good morning, a stiff leg deadlift, a Romanian, anything where my hips are going to be the initiating mover and I'm loading through my posterior chain. That's what the hinge is for. So if I were to take this and go from the hinge all the way to the front, that's gonna shift dramatically. Now the weight has gone from all the way behind me, it's skipped through the safety squat bar phase and the back loaded phase, and now it's in the front. A front squat, as some of you may or may not know, is traditionally done with a straight bar across your shoulders, both, you know, obviously loaded on both sides, and the squat is pulling you forward because the weight is forward, you're having to use your posture and the strength of your back to keep yourself nice and straight. This simulates that. The weight is now in front of me. And as always, I can change the pin placement, make it harder, make it intermediate, and make it easier. The final option that you guys have here is the goblet squat. So a goblet squat got its name because traditionally people would do these with dumbbells and the weight is the weight is not even in line with your gait anymore. Now the weight is quite literally in front of you. The most popular way to do these, usually with kettlebells or with dumbbells, but now you can do these with a barbell as well. So now it's not in line with the front of my shoulders. Now it's six inches in front of the front of the line of my shoulders. So now my back really has to work to keep my posture up as I do this. I love doing goblet squats with the transformer bar. It's the only barbell I found that can really simulate a goblet squat as a backloaded barbell. And couple that with the fact that you've got the pad and the arms, the safety squat features. This is the best barbell in the entire world for backloaded squats. I, I love this thing. It's great. And there's one reason why we do so many videos on it. It's got so much to offer, so many different versatilities. This isn't even going into the options that people have as far as injury prevention. If you have a problem with your knees, goblet squats or front squats are not gonna be for you. That's gonna load up your quads and your knees are gonna be affected. If I take this and I shift this all the way back, say to a low back squat, well now the weight is behind me. So now my posterior chain, my glutes, my hammies, those are all gonna be more influenced than the knees. So now the majority of the weight is on them. And take it in reverse. If I have a lower back problem and I can't do a low back squat or a hinge, I can take this, I can go to safety squat or I can go to a front squat. Either way, I can avoid <laughs> there we go. I can avoid the problem areas that I'm dealing with while still training around them. Guys, this is, uh, again, best barbell I've ever found for this. 
So that just about sums it up for the transformer bar, you guys. Now let's talk about the score. So as you've seen in the video, there's a lot of different things that this does, but our four criteria is not just based on performance of the bar. It's also based on price, footprint, and customer service of the company that you're buying it from. Again, this is an incredible bar, one of the best in the whole world, and all of these scores are gonna be really high, especially for me when it comes to this stuff because I'm kind of an elitist. I put the price point of this at a seven. It is very expensive. I mean, you're talking $700 plus shipping for this bar. Now, it's well worth the investment if you're asking me, but for the average person, this might not be something they wanna just jump on and do at that price point. Seven is still high. It's a good, good score but it is something to account for when you're looking at buying this. It is gonna cost you a fat penny. The usage, you guys, I don't recall ever doing this before. I'm putting this at a 10. This is one of the only products where I can quite literally say I don't find a single flaw in the make of this bar. The way that it's created, the quality the design that they use, the knurling that they have, the way that it has the versatility, all of that is just immaculate. It's amazing, it's an amazing product, and that's why I give it a 10. Footprint. I'd give it an eight. It is a large barbell. It is huge. You have got to have a place to store this thing. If you are gonna buy this and you're gonna put this in your garage or you're gonna get it for your facility, you are gonna need not only a, you know, a footprint holder or a wall mount, you're gonna need one that has some width to it in, in every direction in order to get this thing stored. So again, eight is still high. It's not absurd like a log bar or anything like that, but it is still a very large barbell, something to account for. Customer service, I'm also gonna give it an eight. Kabuki is awesome, and that's a really good score. The one thing I will say, the process of getting this, do not expect to get this barbell for a minimum of three to, three to four months. They are either always backlogged, and I don't know if this is because of recent events with COVID and whatnot, but the customer service is great. They will always respond to you. That being said, if you purchase from them, don't hold your breath. It's gonna be a while. Each one of these bars is made to order, so that means there's gonna be a little bit more time. Again, eight is still a great score, but it's not a 10 for that simple reason. The average for this bar is an 8.25. 8.25, that's a really good score. It's one of the highest scores I've ever given to a piece of equipment since we started doing this. I cannot emphasize it enough, you guys. It's one of my favorites. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Send me a message if you guys have any questions that we didn't address in this. If you have any questions about the score that I gave it, or if you have any objections to the score that I gave it, let me know in the comments below.